Hello and welcome back to the Introvert Circus. I'm Sassafras and I'm here with Sirius and we are back for another training video today. I am super excited. This is one of my favorite tricks to train. If you have my book, Tricks in the City, you have definitely seen this in there, but it is an easy trick, but it's a great trick to get started with if you and your dog are new to training, if you're interested in sports, if you're interested in parkour, it is such a versatile trick. I use this trick in real life all the time, and it is paws up. So for this trick, you're gonna teach your dog to put their two front paws up onto an object and to do it on cue. It's also great for photos. I use this trick all the time. Hi, I know, can you pause it? Seriously, yeah, pause, pause. Switch your second one. Good. So we are just learning to do it on my body, but it is a trick that we use in so many instances. We definitely don't recommend the um, on your body aspect at home if you have a dog that weighs as much as my dog does, unless you um, potentially want to throw out your back, which I did this summer teaching this trick. Pause. Good. Yes. I know, you're very excited. I have super high value salmon skin treats from Trader Joe's right now. We are obsessed with these. Um, if you live near a Trader Joe's and are looking for some high value treats, definitely check these out. They're part of the new, I think they're part of the new seasonal collection. I don't know if they're sticking around. I hope they do, because I like them a whole lot. Are you ready? I know. So the thing that I love about Paws Up, it is a trick that you can teach with really no equipment. I'm gonna show it with some equipment I happen to have here in my training room, but you can train it with things you have all over your house, a chair, an ottoman, a box, Tupperware boxes like Big Rubbermaid, Tupperwares work really well, and things you find in the world. So to get started, you're gonna have treats that your dog is excited about. I have these Trader Joe's salmon fish skins and you're gonna have the object that you want you to put your dog onto in front of you. You wanna make sure it's sturdy. These are super sturdy. Obviously that's gonna depend on the size of your dog, how, you know, how sturdy the object needs to be. But you wanna start with a large object that isn't gonna be tricky for them, I know you know what we're doing, to put their feet on to start with. I know, and you're just gonna offer. And so you're gonna start with a treat on their nose and you're going to, once you have them near the object, you're just gonna lure them right up to it, yes. And when they put their feet onto it, you're gonna mark, if you're a clicker trainer, you can absolutely click at that spot. I love to use clicker training for this. And then you're going to let them off. Seriously, they're making the decision to participate in this and when they put their feet on, it's an automatic market yes, treat. If you have a dog that's a little uncertain about it or a little nervous, you can start with just rewarding one foot at first, <sighs> no, before moving on to trying to get two. And if your dog, good, well done. And if your dog knows off, you can use your off cue, reward your off. Or if you want to teach an off cue, which is really handy to have in real life, you can lure the dog back off of the object, treat when they're off, adding in your verbal cue for off. So that would look like, good girl, yes. And then if you wanted to teach the off with it, you have your treat in your hand, the body follows the nose, yes, good girl. And so then you can slowly, once they're familiar with following it, you're sure they're gonna go off, start adding in your verbal cue. And this is a crumbly treat. Good. Off. Good. Which is how you would start to teach it. And similarly, when they're following the treat really consistently, you can start to add in the verbal cue that you want for putting their paws up. I use paws up. You can use paws, you can use up, you can use absolutely anything. Paws up. I know, did it crumble? This is like the worst treat, but it's because it's super crumbly. Awesome. Good. And you can start to, when you're first introducing the word, you want the treat right on their nose when you're doing it and still just luring paws up. Good girl. Off. Good girl. And then you can start to um, give the cue right before you lure on to 
begin to build their own understanding of it. So they're actually doing it based on the cue, not on the lure. I know. Oops. Paws up. Yes. Good girl. Paws. Good. And then as they get more and more familiar with this, you can start to build um, distance from the object that you're asking them to pause up onto. Serious. Pause up. Good girl. Nicely done. Good. Yes. And again, the cue can be anything you want. With my older dogs, I used two for pause. Serious. Two. Pause. Good. Good girl. And she just knows it as pause up. Okay. And I use four for all feet. Pause up. Just pause. Up. Yes. Oops. So she goes on with all four feet. I just call her back off. Pause. Yes. And this is a little tricky for her because I generally don't use our climb for two feet. So she's actually anticipating that I want four feet. Okay. Pause. Yes. Good. And so this is actually really good for her because she's used to doing something really different with that object. Go pause. Yes. And I marked that too early. Okay. Pause up. Wait, pause. Good. Yes. So I'm gonna give a number of treats there because she is did hold the pause up instead of anticipating the four. Okay. I'm going to let her work the four feet, reminding her there is a difference. You have bits of drool and salmon in your coat. So as your dog is getting more familiar with this, you can start to use different objects or things that you have around the house or that you find in the world. This is a little step stool from Ikea. I love these. I use these for, for um, you've seen it if you've watched our video on pivoting. You can't see it. No, you can see it. It's just a little step stool that I like to use for all kinds of things. Upright. Good. Up. Yes. And so again, you're, if you, if you're just offering everything. Um, you're going to introduce your dog to that object, ask for the pause up. Good. And reward when their feet are on the object. Upright. And it's fun with your more experienced dogs like you're seeing here. She's like, why are we doing really simple things? What else is next? Uh, and so she's trying to anticipate what comes next. And actually what comes next is just the pause up. Yeah. Good. And the more experienced they get, you can start to add in trigger footing for things that might be uh, moving underfoot. So this is a balance disc. Good, see, pause up. Obviously you want to make sure anything good if you're asking them to put their feet on is safe. For them, it isn't going to fall or injure them in any way. Good, pause. They're getting them used to putting their feet on objects that move is really helpful when it's building fluency with this trick. Good. Things like our wobble board. Good. Good girl. And that's one that moves under her feet. And I love to practice this trick all over with different kinds of things. In Tricks in the City, I actually have a challenge to do a pause up challenge where, and we did this, I know you did this in your baby. 30 days, find 30 different things to pause up onto. And it's super fun because it gets you thinking creatively about what kinds of things, whoops, camera slipped, about what kinds of things your dog might be able to put their paws on. So when you're on a walk, finding rocks, finding logs, park benches, any of that stuff is an opportunity. Pause. Good. 
to practice different pause up. Good. Yeah. But again, when you're starting, you're just going to do that lure right up onto whatever the object is. Good. Pause. Yes. Good girl. It also makes for cute photo. Are you going to chew that piece of chick of fish skin? Huh? Makes for really cute photo opportunities and being able to pose your dog for positions. It's also a great muscle builder and a great stretch. So be thoughtful if you haven't done a lot of these and your dog isn't super active, that they're going to be working some muscles they might not have worked for a minute. Pause. Yes. And the better they get, the more, you right? the more you can start to introduce objects again that move and smaller and smaller objects um, where they have to be more thoughtful about where their feet are going when they put their feet up onto the object. Um, I know you are super excited about these treats and you're just offering pivots. Uh, so this is a super, super versatile trick and I love it because it's a great foundation for things like pivot, for photo ops, for just playing around, for parkour. Comes in really, really handy. And then again, the more familiar they get, the more you can build. Uh, and so the more familiar they get with the trick, the more you can ask to build distance with your dog too. So you're able to send them um, to pause up on an object that maybe is further away. And to hold that effort. Good. Go pause up. Good girl. Nice job. So those are all skills that you're able to build within this trick as well. <laughs> you're very cute. So this is a skill you can use <coughs> anywhere. I know. Like if you see logs, pause. Serious, pause it. Which pause? Good. Yes. Good pause up. Yay. And you want to go in and feed in position. Good. Every. Good girl. Just pause it. Think about it. Where's your feet? Pause. Where's your pause? Seriously. Yeah. Pause. There you go. Good girl. 